All right. Continuing where I left off last night, which was, uh, um, that dude got shot in the fucking head. Well, we already knew that. I already knew that. Played this game. But I figured out a way to get, um, to find it yourself. Oh, you know what? I never... I never used the, uh, the radio computer, so I guess I'll try that out. There we go. Tiles on the cube are like a smooth drawer. The filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Oh no. It was already glowing and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien CO-like technology. What the fuck, man? The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out. Crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress Accident en rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Indian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. You mean that glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Is that what I put in? Uh, yes. Good. Please repeat the password. You should ask her for a hint. Uh, I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. True. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Uh, why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. You have any other information about this company? One moment. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's what the catalog says. And what's that? This interactive call-in radio game. Any other questions? Uh, what are you, a machine? Or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Intel Indian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses like stars in the dark doesn't it get lonely sitting there all by herself doesn't it get lonely doing this job lonely <laughs> why would it get lonely i get to talk to people all day that's why she does this now please tell me if there's anything else i can do for this accident that's all for now thank you and goodbye Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Uh, press print. Nothing happens. The right. filament slides out of its glowing nest. Nothing happens. All right. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes 
like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin. And even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? I mean, One of the welkins towering Dungeons and Dragons. appears to be different, however. It's Vara Hamira, a high welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a welkin supremacist. The note Whoa. says all non welkin races will be purged. The Huldor, God, I love fantasy the dwarf, racism. So, the humans, so great. And even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with welkin green welkin, dread welkin, and the high welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little welkin creatures. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm-hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? All gone. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg. Yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way. Like eggnog or morphine. Ugh. A much needed respite from our own world. Yes, eggnog and morphine. A pinned postcard reads, The heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun. Drifting through the universe. How bleak. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, see the prod schedule filament for details. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. What? This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. A diagram for summoning some time-forgotten being. The symbols seem very esoteric. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Of course. The anatomy of the curse. Perhaps. 
The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. Looks like a surveillance program. Wait, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. All of this is gone, left unrealized. This would be sick. This is like a, it's like a giant, well, I'm not going to say West Marches, but having a globe spanning a tabletop game through radios is pretty sick. It's like Discord or any other online <laughs> tabletop game in this day and age. My God, it's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Why do you say that? The schedule. I know Dune when I see it. The company was running out of funding. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Oh. That's that, I suppose. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Um... Someone trying to exercise the curse using technology? No, that's not it. I think it looks like one of those popular pen and paper role playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks, as a compliment. How were they planning to do that? Through call in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game as long as they have a two way radio. Then there's the Game Master Frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. I'd love to play a tabletop RPG with Cam. Cam, I will run a game with you. Come play Lancer. It's great. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the We Were board game, with heat death thrown in. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Well... Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The curse caught them, I see no other explanation. <laughs> ah, yes. The doom of bad business practices. Okay, let's keep moving. Kim's a pen paper nerd. He's right on the cusp. I'll play Mouse Ritter with you, Kim. I need to put a point in this to analyze the bullet, if I remember correctly, so... A good one? Yes? Hello? This is gonna break my heart again. Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. What are you doing? Looking for something to read. Phenomenal. It is. I'm a policeman. I know you are. Good then. Do you, do you need help? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, do you need the help of a policeman? What with? Help her by carrying things? Hmm. Maybe she needs a weightlifter. Maybe she needs you to fight her husband. No. That's not it. Watch her brass books. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. An array of neurons fire up with joy. Bum her a cigarette, lest it turn to pain. You smoke? No, I don't. I know for a fact that you smoke. Why do you think that I smoke? Um... 
It's the kind of place where everyone does. Your hands look like they belong to a heavy smoker. It's not like yours look much better. She is right. Your hands look even worse than hers. With tiny cuts and gushes covering your skin like a spider web. Your fingertips have become an ugly shade of brown. Just give me a cigarette, please. I already told you, I don't have any. Go bother someone else. She's lying. She's goddamn lying. She has smokes. You know where I could get a new pack? From the kiosk? There's one near the harbor. It's a uh, frita. You can look it up. Okay, thanks. No problem. She sighs. Maybe your husband is missing? My husband? No, he's not. So where could he be? I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Where is this going, officer? So what I'm hearing is, you don't really know where your husband is. Yes, but... I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. Wouldn't you like to? No. I can totally help you find your missing husband. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. Oh. She has, though. The husband is totally lost. You should tell her that it's okay. It's okay. What? It's all right to not know where your husband is. Nothing shameful is in that. Who said anything about shame? Stop talking down to me. My husband is not missing. But he is. You can feel it. Or maybe it's something else then. Your children are missing? No, absolutely not. Okay, so where are they? Are you a policeman or a nanny? Nanny, where are they? They are not missing, sir. You know where they are. They're at home. Smoking. Given the ladder of vices a chance. The ladder of vices to describe smoking is crazy. What if something horrible has happened? What if they're dead? That's the bad vibe you got before. What if something awful's happened? What if they're in the sewers? What? That's just... My daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jamrock. There's nothing to worry about. They're almost grown up now anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. I'm afraid the danger is now greater than ever. Tell me how old are they? My youngest girl, Jolie, is just shy of 16. Jenny, she is turning 18 next month. But we shouldn't even be talking about them. And can you describe me their appearance? Any features that stand out? Something to make identifying a little easier? Why do you need to know this? Haven't I repeatedly told you that they are not missing? That they are in Jamrock, safe and well, at some stupid party? Did someone say party? You could use a party. Hunt it down. It's for the investigation. I'm trying to be professional. Okay, no, 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 no. I could do with a party. A killer party, not a lame one. A killer party? What is it with you and Pope Staples? My God. Please, no more talk about my daughters. They are fine. Uh, maybe your cockatoo is missing. I don't mean to disrespect, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get ladies. It's better to indulge him at this point. Ma'am, I was asking about your cockatoo. Is it missing? I don't even have a cockatoo. And guess what? What? Even if I had, it wouldn't be missing. Alright, cockatoo not missing. I just wanted to make sure. Great. So more question. What did you mean by me being a cockatoo? Nothing. Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain? Or your heraldic bird? Actually, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Thanks for the tip. Wonderful. The store is open. That's all for the moment only reason. The woman okay. before you. Okay. Stop, Keeper. You got any books on a cockatoo? Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I'm looking for a book about cockatoos. A book about Cockatoos? There should be one upstairs, right next to the shelf of biographies. Uh, this one. Shelves full of biographies. Oh. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and. Bi this. A sulfur-crested cockatoo sits on the cover. 
its beak slightly open. It looks as if the bird is calling out the book title. From A to Zurich, a guide to a well-behaved cockatoo. Turns out that there are so many different cockatoo species, and they all have behavioral problems. Mm. You don't have behavioral problems. That's garbage. You're cool. Yeah! It's a must-have if you own a cockatoo. I've heard they're quite capricious. I... Oh, a nature enthusiast. Good choice. I knew it was a good idea to keep that around. Let's read this. Book about different cockatoo species and their behavioral problems. Perhaps it could also offer some insight into your own problematic actions. The spectacular, major, majestic cockatoo eyes you from the cover. A cockatoo is a parrot with an erectile crest found on the Seminine Islands and in southern Fas a la Mer. Known for their intelligence and general precociousness, cockatoos are popular birds in aviculture. However, they often exhibit various behavioral issues. This book talks about the delicate nature of twos, as well as introducing some of the most popular species among the bird enthusiasts. The funeral cockatoo, the major majestic cockatoo, and the most common bang bang cockatoo. It's colorfully illustrated. All right, what problems do these birds have? Where to even begin? All cockatoos are known for their needy natures, requiring attention for at least two full hours a day. They love to talk and have been described as lovable clowns who just don't know how to wrap up. I could handle that. It would be nice to have someone to talk to when feeling lonely. Pet owners also report moodiness, loudness, and hostility as recurring issues. If left unsatisfied, cockatoos may scream non-stop, pluck their feathers, or become aggressive. Right, that's pretty bad. Anything else? It is not recommended to get a cockatoo if you're not able to cook them food every day and give them the full care that they need. These birds will never understand that you have a life of your own. Yes, but there has to be something great about cockatoos as well. You're right. Cockatoos are magnificent creatures. They love to perform, cuddle and show off, and will even scream for fun, often as loud as up to 135 decibels. This is a yellow-tailed black cockatoo. Its specific name, Sitarchus fenarius, relates to its dark and somber plumage. This bird looks as if dressed for a funeral, 24-7. There is something indisputably ominous about it. Ooh. Cool. Perhaps the most impressive of all the species, the endangered major majestic cockatoo, is often described as the most flamboyant bird in the jungle. Its pink-colored wings and flowing crest embellishing its proud and bumptious nature. Bumptious. In the words of poet explorer Sir James Fournier, few birds more enliven the monotonous hues of the verdant forest than this big, bold, and beautiful species. Despite its banging name, the Bang Bang Cockatoo is actually the shyest of the species, common in almost all Seminese forests, as well as zoos and homes all over the world. Its plumage is mainly gray and white. The Seminese name Bang Bang is thought to be of onomatopoeic origins. Honestly, this bird does sound a bit like me. Yes, but all those cockatoo species are so different. Which one are you? Isn't that obvious? Major Majestic, here I come. You're right. Your majesty embodied. This big, beautiful bird belongs on your heraldry. Hell yeah. Okay. I talk to the lady and tell her what, uh... Kind of cockatoo I am. <laughs> you were right that I'm a cockatoo. Excuse me? I went and read up on them, just like you said, and I even decided on what kind of cockatoo I am. Wanna know? I don't know. The most talkative one? No, I'm the major majestic cockatoo. The what now? The major majestic cockatoo. It's the most impressive one. You truly are one strange cock, aren't you? Yeah. The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. The book says you must attain a Franco-Nigerian hard body at the nearest gym. Cool. 
Um, you know, I never talked to these guys down here. Life doesn't need to be a struggle. I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to Angry Hog René first. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. René, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. All right, I got this. Ball time. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. Grab the ball and show them how it's done. Okay. Oh boy. This felt wrong. Wrong like mm? touching your sister's breast. You threw your sister's breast. What? Mon dieu! Good job, officer. That was an excellent throw. There are no two more harmful words an athlete can hear than good job. And this was downright embarrassing. Hold on, why did it feel so wrong? Your muscle memory knew what to do and went for it. But there were gaps. Yeah, gaps you tried to fill with thinking. We don't think in sports. True. We do. It felt like you were going for a thrust or a lunge. There was definitely going to be jumping. Maybe you scored a point, but this is a fiasco. I thought something way more spectacular would happen. What are you talking about? You just executed a pretty much perfect petang throw. With a pinch of fear. How are you ever going to get the officer's shit off your nose, Gaston? Or even climb out of his ass? That's just how Johnny Ball game is. Extraordinary. Right. Was the demonstration it? Or do you still need something from us, officer? Yes, officer. What do we need from this gentleman? Uh, Rene, I found your guard booth. Yes. The Debardeaux Union pays me to stand with you during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and... Money is tight. He feels like he has to justify himself for some reason. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. Hold on, why are you on a leave? It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, officer, René is the kind of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, sick it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. I'm fine, goddammit. Mind your own business. <sighs> it's nothing. Just got to cut back on coffee. So who was working your shift that night? No one. The bus has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday? Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officer. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Mostly decorative? The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Ah, uh, yes, the panopticon. 
Evra created this job for René because he knows the royal crab in his pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. Um. I don't know. This one. Can we conclude the topic of my guard booth now? I saw a picture in there. You were in it. Who's the girl? She is nobody. This is none of your concern. <clears throat> I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jeanne Marie Beaulieu, and she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Got it. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway. So might as well keep an eye out. He keeps my senses sharp. You know anything about the man? Unfortunately, I don't. And like most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez. The union is the law. So can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. So, again, you don't know anything. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I'm an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. This is a man with a lot of past, but little present, and almost no future. Insane bar. Uh, you seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Does that have anything to do with all the bullet holes I've been seeing around? Yes. It was left by heavy artillery fire. Heavy artillery fire, you say? That's the best kind of artillery fire. Very interesting. True. Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Wait, who are the communists again? Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose a name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't so, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. Why shell them here in Martinez? Because this place is a damn beachhead. Had to soften the commies up first. A beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. He finds your lack of historic knowledge troubling. A sign of mental deterioration in the preceding generations. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. Death blow. Sounds grim. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Hold on, the coalition? Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, officer. I hate those foreign dogs, but uh, the enemy of my enemy and all that. They're the lesser evil. Is that why everything is so bombed out? Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the coalition, Revachol, 
Whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? Uh... That should be soft socials paving the way for hardworking class to take over. Preposterous! Surely you don't mean it. I'm just sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those commie hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking my piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal, or even if that damn clan Friesel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. How does Philippe III factor into this? He doesn't. That was 100 years ago. Ain't got nothing to do with anything. Who is this for sale? Damn for his cell. He was a king we couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him. And the crown. <laughs> he died in the hands of the hyperlay. In a very public execution. He slouches as he says that. It makes him smaller, admitting they left the king to the mob. You mentioned Guillaume. A true king in both blood and mind. Led Revachal before Frisel. He would have been better. But the damn commies drove him into exile. Hmm, what exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? <sighs> they forgotten already. Soon, they will forget everything. Him too. Then, he chooses anger over melancholy. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. <laughs> when we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Is there anything you can tell me about this rifle? It's a Bell McGrave. 4.46 caliber. Breech loading. Revachal made. Good weapon. Accurate and reliable. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? Uh, in the basement there. I'm not surprised. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. Back in the day, everyone had something stashed away. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. These BM-446s are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. Yeah, I saw the statue of Philip III near the roundabout. Ah, yes! King Philip III, on his steed. A reminder of what Revachal once was. Oh! Absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. How should a true king rule? Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. A nation is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. The Carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Let's talk about something else. Right. All you well, observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past and his old uniform. This is not uncommon. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Fissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip the Fifth before him. Don't you mean Fissel the Fan? You do not speak his name, Craven, although he was a clown. But he was our clown, ours to ridicule and to mourn. 
There's something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. Son, you've really let yourself go. It's a disgrace. But Coach Physical Instrument is going to get you back in prime condition. Even if it takes a million push-ups. Yes, sir. Forge me into organic steel coach. It's going to take blood, sweat, piss, and tears. But when I'm done with you, boy, you will be a master athlete. Wait, why piss? When a man sets his mind and body on something and gives his 110%, he is sometimes <laughs> going to piss himself. It just happens. No shame in that. Let's do this, coach. I'm with you. Behold, world. Here walks a sportsman, hands choked and hair kept back with a bandana. The Homo Athleticus. Um, so you're minding your own business, trying to get some detective work done, when suddenly a voice emerged from within you and told you you're a wiss, a wuss, a namby-pamby, a sissy, and a limp jellyfish. This voice has zero gender sensitivity and even less empathy for underwhelming athletic performance. Try to purposely piss it off and see if it teaches you something. Pretend you don't know the difference between a double and a single support phase and the discipline of hammer throw. It hates that. Okay, this only takes 40 minutes. Do I have a bonus to this? The bullet is still safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Alright. There. Working class drunk. You know what this means, right? Case solved. Cracked it. All in a good day's work. Wait, what did I crack exactly? What do you mean, what did I crack? Look at how working class that drunk is. It's the future leader of a proletarian uprising. No, it's not. It's her husband, the missing husband. Yes, and you found him. Now go and tell the working class woman. Protect and serve, recruit. Give me champagne, I'm going in. There's no need for champagne when there's honor, recruit. Go and tell the working class woman what you found right now. Um, okay. Almost bulls worthy of a real man. Ma'am. <laughs> Pretty conserved, madam. I found your husband. God damn it, I already told you. My husband isn't missing. Well, I found him nevertheless. I'm that good. Very well then. Where is he? There. Excuse me? I don't follow. There's something else hiding in her voice, though. I found a, a of worry. I found a working class drunk, and I thought he might be yours. Right, cause working class women come with alcoholic husbands. You know what? What? You were right. I do have an alcoholic husband, although not that one. But you told me your husband's all right. I did, and he is. He's also an alcoholic. So is he missing as well? No, he's not. Or maybe he is, I don't know. He's probably in the park, or in Jambrock somewhere, drinking with his friends. I haven't seen him for... Well, to hell with him! There. She's worried now. Yeah, is it just me, or do we have a missing persons case here? I wouldn't be so sure. Man, just to be completely clear, do you want to report it to the police? Report what? He's just out drinking with his friends. I'm sure the police has better things to do than to chase down local goofballs. Not at all. The RCM is ready to chase down every goofball in town. We care about you. She sighs, but you can detect a slight hint of gratitude and relief from her face. All right, go ahead. Do you have any questions? What does your husband look like? Honestly, not that different from you. So let me guess. He's disco. Oh, thank God, no. It hasn't come down to this yet. Why did you say that your husband resembles me, then? Well, he's slightly chubby. Wait, did she just imply that you're fat? You're not fat. The body type she's referring to is called a Franco-Nigerian hard body. I'm not chubby, and neither is your husband. What you meant to say is that we both share a Franco-Nigerian hard body. You both share what? Franco-Nigerian hard body. Softly round yet still in shape. Ladies dig it. 
I'm not sure about the rest, but softly round sounds about right. He's not in great shape. What else? He was wearing a dark brown leather jacket with a bright blue inner lining. The lining is hand-sewn. I made it myself. It's his cool jacket. God knows it's too cold to run around in this, but he refuses to change. Who cares about the cold when you have your cool jacket to wear? You can completely sympathize. I even tried throwing it away once, but he just dug it out of the bin. Can you believe it? Well, if that jacket is really that cool, then I can totally understand. Well, what can you do? I hope that at least that extra lining helps him keep warm at night. I wouldn't like him to catch cold. She's thinking about him out in the cold, in some park, or on the coast. And it's making her more and more worried. When did you last see him? Yesterday morning. He went to the library. He went to retrieve my book and he promised, he promised, he'd walk straight back home. This is so sad, man. <laughs> because we talked about this. We talked about not wandering off again. I, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do with his addiction. Just makes me feel weak. She turns away from you in an attempt to recover. I think I got it. Thanks. So you are going to look for him? She genuinely wants you to now. Don't make her ask. Yes, I will bring him back home to you. Thank you. Please do. Even though I'm sure he will return home by himself. I'm still sure of that. I'm sure he will too. When he does, would you let Prison 57, Kim Kitsuragi, know? I will, of course, officer. As I said, it's probably nothing. Right. She gives you a sh- Okay. Um, yeah, gonna have to break her heart later. Um, and by extension, my own. But I should probably talk to, uh, the Hardy Boys. Kim goes to bed. Let me handle this. Detective disorientated. Are you still wondering where you are? This is Martinez, in case you've forgotten. I advise you not to overstay your welcome. You're the gardener. No, I am not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. So let's get to it. You're looking for Titus Hardy? You think he has information that will help you? Maybe he does. That's Titus. Talk to him. But know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming. Nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Um, you're sure easily I mentioned something about a lawyer, Elizabeth, someone. But you're too dumb to remember what it was. No, what's your role in all this? Like I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you have hearing problems? What if I want to talk to you, not Titus? What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. What are you going to do to me? Hmm. What are we going to do to you? <laughs> the union isn't going to do anything to you. It is not a crime syndicate. It is a labor organization. Uh -huh. Goddamn right it is. If anything, it is the RCM who do things to people. But we digress. Why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Hmm. So you were spying on us. And now you represent murder suspects. Just dock workers. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob. Enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. So ask what you came to ask. Or get back to your commanders. Um, I like that. Good start. Let's take it a step further. Armed uprising. What are the Union's plans? Look, 
a comedian, do your job, ask your questions, then get out of Martinez. I should talk to Titus then. It's a bowl. You're spitting it, reeking of tab tobacco. Photos of men in overalls, toting guns, and union placards. You see hawthorn bushes outside. Hmm. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. The men are talking, but you swear you hear those black limbs tap on the window as the wind blows outside. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. You're not so sure about that. Somehow you just know there's something out there behind the glass. There's something out there. Yeah, your mother. Minus 12 is crazy. All right, well. Nothing. Just black tangles like the hair of an old woman. Motionless. The wind in the yard doesn't reach the whole thought. I'm gonna die. Nor does the light come in from this window. I'm going to die. All right, Titus. This is where you say your bed. Detective. Hey, hey, dipshit. You hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. What, is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? Hey, asshole, up here. We're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. First when you talk about your attitude. Wow. The RZM sent us some big dick cops. Real big dick cops. Look at them. Reckless. Swinging in the wind. Yeah, look at the big dick on that cop. Can't tell a dick that big what to do. Must be something in the water in Jamrock. Yeah, gave him real nice big Dicks. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. These guys are so macho, they're ready to confess to first degree murder. Ask if it was them. Questions? To hell with that. Get right up in the big dick's face. Physical confrontation. No, no, uh, no. I was here. You got business with my boys. You got business with me. The boys are too eager to please him to keep their mouths shut. You're gonna get a good head count here. Just wait. Yeah! You fuck with the Hardy boys, you fuck with Titus Hardy! Relax, Dennis. No one is fucking you yet. Yeah, Dennis, calm down. No one's fucking you, you stupid fuck. Let Dennis enjoy his fucking, man. We don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even being fucked, Dennis. Easy, fellas. We got company. Let's see what brings the cop around. Too late. You already scanned the room. You got a pretty good picture. Of the actors here, you could take another look at the tracks in the mud on the crime scene. Compare it to these guys. Man hanged in the backyard. Did you do it? So, you're not just here to swing your big dick. You're here for the pretty boy. A real looker, that one. Stinks like shit, too. They love him, boss. Spend all day digging around in there. Can't get enough of that pretty boy smell. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes, why? Because we took it. From the harbor where we work then we went out back and used it to hang him as he speaks his fists contract going through the pulling machine again savoring it we did this together all of us until he was dead that's why there's a container belt around his neck aha uh -huh. so you just confessed to murder God damn right. I. No. These seven honest men have equally come forth. 
They told you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. You murdered him just like that? No remorse? How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? For send them to reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. Um. It was different. We enforce the law. You just kill people like it's nothing. Uh, look, I'm just doing my job. That's all. Oh, so you are just a simple, well-meaning man, eh? Ever been in solitary? Prison is a charter. That's what it is. He's clearly been in solitary confinement, and at a young age, nonetheless. So is hanging a man slowly without breaking his neck. Well, the shots that night. Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? No, but seriously, who calls the shots around here? <laughs> who do you fucking think does? Um, you do. You give the commands. That's right, asshole. Titus Hardy runs the Hardy Boys. Ain't that so, fellas? I think you got your answer, Mr. Law. No, you did not get an answer. Titus does administrative work. He pushes paper, fills out forms, the others can't read. But on that night, they all acted as one man. When did this hanging incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How long had you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The representative for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Why did you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out alive in my town. So he was a mercenary, that's it? I am. He stepped out alive. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenin written all over him. Ex Oranese Special Forces. A live grenade, right here in our bar. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Hold on, how do you even know he was in Special Forces? Because one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm RNA's goddamn Special Forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all! Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some RNA's paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did, right there. Like some kind of animal. Right, but what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women. Raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. There's a slight unease in him, suddenly. He regrets mentioning the rape. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started coming here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, Grab one of ours mid karaoke right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? Yeah. This girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl, young. Gets into the second verse of Lover Lake. 
the fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle, doesn't even fall down. Was this the same girl who was sexually assaulted? Raped, you said? Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? Right, but who did he rape then? This is a very serious allegation. No, you're not getting the name. That's a Martin A's matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. There's nothing you can do for now. He's stonewalling you. Um, how did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? The autopsy showed there were no ligature marks. His hands were not tied. Can you explain that? Um, we... <sighs> Look, I'm not gonna play 20 questions with you, capo. I'll say it again. We killed him. Yeah, I knocked him out. Came up behind him and clapped him in the back of the head. He went down like a sack of sand. That's right, lawman. And then we hanged the fuck. Mr. Tess, why, what did you use to knock the victim out? My fucking elbow, copper. Summer unboxing style. Where did all this action take place? Right fucking here. Eugene already told you that the fuck had started coming to our bar. Yeah, man, weren't you listening? Oh, shit. Rock, and so are a few others, but... First, tell me who's solid. Elaine, who looks like he might be Titus's right-hand man. The least antsy of the bunch. Definitely not his first time being questioned by the police. This little rat-faced fellow is solid, too. Always fidgety, yes. But no change there. Him neither. Mostly keeps to his tomato juice, or whatever he's got there. It's cracking under the pressure. <sighs> hey you, you having trouble breathing over there? No. Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. There's something you're not telling me. And fuck you too, copper. Picking on Angus like this. We're done with this schoolyard shit. And just so you know, he doesn't have trouble breathing. His all muscle comment wasn't sarcastic. He's genuinely trying to look out for Angus. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Not yet. Right, I have other questions about the lynching. Like what, copper? How does the bullet in his head factor into this? Huh? There was a bullet in the dead man's brain. Why was it there if you hanged him? How the fuck do I know? Anyone could have shot him. Target practice, maybe. This line of questioning is over. You got the cause of death already? Hanging. If there's any post-mortem trauma, it's your problem. This will not turn into a cross-examination. So what are we going to do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent-a-cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. Rent-a-cop? So that's what this is about. He doesn't see you as his equals. Forget about their games. You've mapped out the characters. Reading the footprints in the yard should be easier now. 
again. Mm. <laughs> Good ones. About fucking time. You still haven't explained the bullet I found in the hangman's head. You still on about that bullet? A bullet in a hangman's head. You're right, Copper. That is mighty curious. Indeed, mighty. How did it get there? Well, there are so many bullets in the world and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it's only logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. Let me ask you again, why was this in the victim's head? Wow! He's got it in a real evidence bag and all! Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. I'm thinking the hanging... I think the hanging was a cover-up for the shooting. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid. And his brain grew around the bullet. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. They're only pretending to enjoy this. Beneath the act, they don't like you knowing this. Did you guys shoot him? Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. No, he meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. Don't worry, we'll figure this out sooner or later. Never been worried in my life, Lawman. I'm gonna take off for now. Cool. Um, let's get this hand-eye coordination going. Let me just save in case it's the wrong one. The bullet is still safely sealed away. A right yes. revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique or a retrofitted antique. Make. The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Belmagrave rifle, a Revacholian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insulindian theater of the anti-centennial revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you, the dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly. If it were, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. Is anyone still making these rifles? No, but Zeliger, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. Who uses Bell McGrave rifles these days? Antiques enthusiasts, guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers. You're looking for the same thing you found in that hidden weapons cache. Only in working order. Hmm. What are you thinking? Bullet? I think I know where this came from. Okay. And? The shot probably came from a Bell McGrave rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There can't be many breech-loading rifles floating around in Martinez or anywhere in Ravachon, really. Why not? Sure, there's some arms trafficking. But the laws prohibiting the use of breech-loaders we inherited from the monarchy have been effective, from what I've seen. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Worth what? Getting shot? Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. True. But back to the investigation. Um. Something mysterious is a photo antique bullet type. Mysterious? Okay. Either way, we'll know when we find the gun. Cool. Too bad, uh. <laughs> Too bad this won't be done until, uh, the end of the game.
You have anything to say? I've got nothing to say to you. Uh, no, apparently. All right, well, let's go look at the, uh... You see a sense of... The locked. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? That's right, the hardy boys in the mess hall of whirling in rags. One, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth, this is the big dick, Titus Hardy, the one with the ball cap on his head. Is it? They didn't even bother to change boots. Putting them on the scene is easy, maybe even too easy. Two, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with a plectrum around his neck. Three, hobnailed work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 43. The inked banger, perhaps. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you even see a tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the print. Five, another standard work boot, reinforced toes, number 44. Same as before, either the musician, Eugene, or the muscle-bound blonde, Glenn. Six, light as air, same make of boot, but number 41. Small like a rat, shanky. Better late than never, detective. The whole world is dark and the tracks burn in it with strange beauty. Seven, the glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus, carrying something? Eight, another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the soul. The right soul is smoother, more worn. Curious. A missing eighth Hardy Boy. Seven sets of tracks, right? The Hardy Boys were here. Eight, actually. That's all? Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out of the ordinary? An aberration, one soul smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it the Old Soul. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing Hardy Boy. Wonder who he is. Do you have any ideas, Lieutenant? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? He regrets it the moment he says it. Don't say anything, just not. I don't know why I said that. We are not looking for a drummer. We are looking for a group of dock workers. The lieutenant clearly appreciates the chance to clear up the drummer issue himself. Yeah! Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. I was actually thinking the exact same thing. He doesn't seem to hear you. Looking south, toward the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent. The engines are all turned off. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yes, prudent. Mm -hmm. Light step number 41 shoe. I'm guessing that's the skinny hardy boy. The one with his front teeth missing. In the rat-faced one? Yes, well, he did look a bit like a rat. You're right. Do you think those prints belong to him? Yes. I could still be wrong, but I'm probably not. Heavy one, 200 kilogram imprint. 200? This could be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. Maybe it was a fat hardy boy, the one sitting in the middle. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. You're right. The fat guy from the booth was carrying the victim. Probably yes. This would also fit with the victim being dead from a previous gunshot wound. They had to carry him because he could no longer walk. Is there anything else that's not worth you here? How old do you think these tracks are? 
A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. What do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashol. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. Something happened here. What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. But we know the victim had a bullet in his head. A more precise way to put it is, it was made to look like a lynching. Been purposefully misled. By these tracks? Yes. Cool. Looks like the circus left town. But the clowns are still here. Uh, I found eight sets of footprints, but there's only seven of you. Where's the eighth hardy boy? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us and we're all here. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... This person Glenn wants to hire, he really respects her. Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? So let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your shit. And you're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth hardy sooner or later. All right. That's the truckers. Wait, I, didn't I ask the using 57 lady to look up some Inside, shit? Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out tool as you tap on the gauge. Now, now, that's enough fun. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Then for come in. Wait, before you say anything stupid, Think it through. You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell- 10 four, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Hold on, are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. That's a negative, sir. I got a 1012 here. Over. I want to know if you got my bad description writing report. Could you read to me name rank date of birth? What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify. But of course, it says- Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over. Oh, I'm looking for my address. I don't know where I live. Then for your address. Hold up, Jules. He doesn't fucking know where he lives. Did I hear that right? Seems like it, sir. I'm gonna die. No, fuck him. Don't tell him anything. Sorry, sir. Anything more I can do for you? Please refer to me with my last name in the future. The nine repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. Say my name. Sir, I will not have you talk to me in this manner. Over. Just please just say my name, Jules. Uh, what? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. Any news about my own um, family? Ten. Um, excuse me, sir. Over. You probably don't want to continue on this road. Nothing, never mind. Come again, sir. I didn't get that. Ten I was about my life before the RCM. Ten for well, that's uh. Does he actually want something or is he hell bent on disrupting our work? He asked if he ever told me about his days before joining the RCM. 
For God's sake, cut this shit out! Tell him to stop wasting time and be a goddamn policeman for a change. Sir, satellite officer Vikmar says... I heard him. So, um, was there anything else? Yeah, let's wrap this up. Understood, sir. Over. All for now. Roger that. 10-10. Over and out. 18 kilometers to the south, in the 41st Precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around communication officer Jules Oldboy Pudier, around a dozen cops. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? What happened is my partner made contact. It's not good. He's lost his badge and his sidearm. He seemed confused, delirious even. Mac, the torso Torson, is finger fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, Mac's right. That was some gnarly shit there. Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. He's one of us, goddamn this. We must help him. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on car juice? He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. Mac, man the door. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain. Or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. I guess I can hold up the report for a few days. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. Still here? Stuck in this damn jam, my man? What's up? Mm. Still, the woman is still. Ah, uh, my end. Yep. All right. Well, um, Should buy a cigarette. You see several packages. Oh. A colorful display there, in that dark green glass. All I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health, but I guess you already know that. Here you go, mister. Go. Oh. Oh god, I got this glitch. God damn it. Oh. I don't want to smoke the cigs. I mean, just, oh. These grad made, grad made cigarettes are remarkable for their high tar content. A favorite fisherman, police officers, and working men rolled over. Hmm. Talk to Joyce. I guess I should go into the uh the apartment, because I never did that. Ooh, bag. Yes. Now I can pick up tear. sells so much tear.
see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. Uh, no trouble for me. I just want to know what's going on here. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. It's the god of cigarettes and youth. Ask him if he's got anything to spare. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Actually, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to you. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. By God, this young man has the body of a decathlete. His lithe form was practically made for vaulting over the high bar. Son, do you train? Occasionally. Why? Nothing. You should give up smoking, son. It's not good for your health. You're right. It's horrible for the skin. Very aging. Tell me your name. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez, good local name. Let's go with that. So you've got a good view of the Whirling's backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinez's standards. What were you doing last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Are you sure I didn't? No, not you. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. What kind of friend? He was my Sunday friend. A Sunday friend? How intriguing. What's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply. Gesturing no with his cigarette. In the neighboring windows, you can see faint reflections of his silhouette, all from different angles. Someone hides behind a curtain. Those windows have eyes, and those eyes are watching, spying on you three. All right, we'll talk later. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains? Hey, listen. I'm just trying to make things okay again. Can we meet again somewhere else? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes. Compassion and a hint of understanding. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. But, hold on, what's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. He's gone. You should run after him, see where he went. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. So we just give up? He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. There's a key beneath it. This must be for the front door. Pity he doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments and a man can be in any of them. How are we going to find the right one? We'll just have to go in and see. Cool. Hi, Captain. A visceral pause. Poise. Uh, this classic double-breasted coat suits everyone, including you. And if you ever find yourself battling winds at the helm of a ship, then the coat's heavy fabric has got your back, even if moths have left a few holes. Fiction notices and missing pets are plastered on top of each other. Oh, 
box is filled with cleaning chemicals. It smells of laundry detergent. Glasses. Balancing the books. Filthy boho, probably a narcomaniac. These flip-up sunglasses were fashionable in the old, but have since lost their popularity. Their thin gold alloy, alloy wire frames are a reminder of drug-addled bohemian artists. These days, the glasses are only favored by organized crime accountants who desire to look cool. An old shoe rack, boot sneakers, and old slippers. Apartment 12, a lot of rumbling snoring comes within. Snoring is scary somehow, you should leave. Yes, I need it. Shower curtains are covered in some sort of slime. Just drawn a five point star on the wall. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. No reply. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. This door has been closed with a padlock. What are you doing? Whoa. You're trying to cut the body of the lock with the chain cutters. I'm gonna Despair die. creeps into you. Getting fat on your weakness. Oh my god. Whatever noble intentions you once had as a police officer, it's eating them all up now. There's something else in there. There has to be. But it's like reaching your hand into muddy water, fishing around, and coming up with nothing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're shit out of luck fishing around right now. You're drowning. You're still coming up with sentences. That's a step up from total annihilation, right? Oh god, I'm having a breakdown. Um... He watches you melt down stoically from behind the lenses of his glasses. Nothing you can say would make you feel any better now. Cop gives up the detective genre for social realism. What? Another police officer resigned from the RCM following a nervous breakdown. He now lives under a bridge, drinking and occasionally throwing excrement at passers-by, shouting, I never loved that woman. When asked to comment, former colleagues objected to the theory that his psychological disintegration was precipitated by his wife leaving him. It's because the furrows lost that match said Captain Patolomy Price, once the man's superior officer. It's because he couldn't get a big gun from acquisitions, and anyway, police work really burns you out after a while. Satellite officer Jean Vicmer, the deranged former cop's partner, commented. Sergeant Mac Torson, another former colleague, did not propose any theories, merely saying, whatever happened to him wasn't about birds. He got fucked, that's all. Damn it. Oh, I gotta load so far. Where am I at? Did I look at the bullet? Bullet is still safely sealed.
you see? Are you not looking for any trouble, officer? I don't want to. It's the don't let him go. This could be. Is it really that? Like a nervous. All right, but make it. By God. Occasionally. You're right. It's ho my name. Martin Martinez. I can tell. What were you? Oh. No. Not and when? Last week. You did. <sighs> it was my. Hey, makes sense. He. Someone hides behind a curtain. Those windows have eyes. And those eyes are watching, spying on you. I can tell that you finally got it. What were you doing? Oh. No, not you. And when? Last week? You didn't answer the... <sighs> it was my son. Hey, son makes sense. Friends are not... He. Someone hides behind... No. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get... This for a moment. I am... But it's a... Good luck with the investigation. Ugh. He's gone. No point in running. He could. He did. If we find a stone, this, this must will just. Ha this must be. That's probably the door I've had mentioned. We still need to get the key from. All right. So the key. Yeah. Anyway. Fuck the door, I'm not doing that. You hear someone. The walking stops. You can feel tension. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I Let's go. We don't Later then. Wow. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. You're right, should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? Who are you? I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. Live here? If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the cold room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. And all she gets, too. The coastal wind beats down hard on the cold room door outside. Splashes of waves make the balcony slippery. I'm looking for Martin Martin his. Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. What do you mean? I wasn't joking. Key brain. Someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez is a name for anyone who comes from Martinez. Like Jim Jamrock or Raoul Ravagel. Oops. You really didn't get the joke there. I thought it was obvious. Anyway, officer, we don't have the witness's name. What a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair, skinny build, smoke on the balcony, you know where he lives? Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who was always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? No trouble, I just want to talk to him, you know where he lives. Talk? <laughs> he lives
lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Ask away, policeman. Do you want the residents on a vacation? Their mailbox is overflowing. People come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. Who lives in apartment number 10? No one lives there. It's been empty for months. I talked to someone through the door. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? Sure, I'll go see what I can find. Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. What can you tell me about Cindy? The artiste. Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still, she leaves an old lady to her business. More than I can say for others. That's all, thanks. She mumbles some kind. A firing squad for the rich. Oh, now you want auto save after I fucking died the first time. Or closed by Martinez Realty Associates. The below looks cold and winter gray. A shift in temperature. The air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. A former architect stands before a slice of window. A room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen, with temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. It's red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. Interesting. A yeah, fridge. Might as well head up to the balcony. Hey, Cindy. Oh, the piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. But here you are. That's right, we evolved. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutations. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel oil, intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. She really did it. She's proud of it, too. Some clever cultural commentary. You ain't seen nothing yet, piggy boo. Above, tarps flap in the wind, forgotten hammers and nails rust. Well, Kim seems to have gotten in just fine. Don't know what that's all about. Postcard, Boogie Street 46. Crumpled up postcard depicts an open-air market in Boogie Street five years ago. A vendor smiles as Dead Rooster's line his stalls. Hung by their feet from canopy. Red blood flows onto the muddy street. Blurry shadows of people pass. Pants. Poor le home laborer jeans. Like, God ass. God ass. Hindsighted. 
Although these jeans look worn, the wearer must have had an ass given to them by the mighty lord himself. That beautiful peach-shaped man ass has imprinted itself so deep in the fabric, you can't but wonder if wearing them would start molding your own vague rear side into a more shapely form as well. Alright, I don't know. <laughs> don't need, uh... Don't need, uh, the jeans. Someone's been sleeping here recently. Uh, enough coal to last for several winters. Chemicals. Yes. Locked. Do I need the pry bar? Yes. Some money. Getting richer by the hour. Sell all these. I can probably pay off Garth's thing. Sell all these bottles. Get back inside. Gotta go to the other balcony. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. This apartment is supposed to be empty. Did you break in here? Excuse me? Of course not. Scare them. Suspected of some big crime. There's no sweet talking your way in there. Be official. Um, I don't need a warrant if I suspect there's been a break in. Oh, come on. That was smart. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier, and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in, as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? Her voice is really cheerful, despite her obviously hating you. <laughs> Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? Sure. It feels flimsy in hand. With the words, Revachol Zone of Control, written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Nice haircut. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. What are you doing here? I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. I fuck shit up too. Ha! Huh. Sounds like you've spent too much time undercover in some rock band. Lived here. It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent. A sudden serious look crosses her face. This story didn't have a happy ending. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? I'm in a hurry. Was, who lived in the foreclosed apartment down the hall? Oh, that's another huge mess. <coughs> the former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. So preppy. She's probably on some low-grade performance enhancers, <laughs> like Preptide or Pericanine. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? <clears throat> and then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. Oh, it irks her. The incompetence. Uh, couldn't have been that much money. Apartments look pretty shabby. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. It's as if they're real wizards, able to resurrect dead real estate and breathe life into bank accounts. My money has also disappeared, I think. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. So wait, what happened with the wall? Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. That's all, thank you. Of course. It's your pack of uh, medicine piece out of the box. You should take it. No. Oh. Looks like a fine mattress.
Oh god, yes, please, I need that. Oh, did I never do the footprints? Guess not. Plus one indirect modes of taxation. Flint Moneymaker Man. These Per and Ingersoll shoes have no lacing, but a strap and a buckle. Due to their elegant and affluent design, they have been described as the most advanced dress shoe. So advanced, in fact, that walking through slush and mud does not leave a single trace on them. Well, I don't think I'm going to get some any use out of that, so... Save again. I'm going to put the bolt cutters in my hand, and hopefully... I can open this. This door has become no reply. It's a solid lump of... You seem committed to it, so go on. The shackle Finally. snaps like a killed twig, me last time. and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. Fine point poster of a white star, real lithography. Books of critical theory on the monstrous monstro monstrosities of capital and such. Photos of revolutionaries posing with guns. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads, Kras Mazov. Honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. Why does this tenant have a bust of Kras Mazov in their bedroom? The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. Kim, you have to admit this Kraz Mazov bears a striking resemblance to me. Hold on a second. Is this why you broke in here? To find out whether you're Kraz Mazov? I have to consider and investigate all possibilities. Except that Kraz Mazov is dead. He's been dead for 50 years now. Just humor me for a moment. Don't you see the resemblance? Well, you both do seem to share an affinity for sideburns. But it seems like old Kraz here didn't drink nearly as much as you. How do you know? The bus is probably just a romanticized depiction anyway. Ah, <sighs> very well. Let's look for identifying features then. Doesn't he have a birthmark right here? What about you? I can't tell, I can't see my face. All right, but here's the big thing. Krasmasov looks Samara, and you don't. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Look at his eyes. Wasn't his mother a Samaran immigrant? I'm part Samaran myself. This is like claiming you're like 1 16th like Native American or something. Okay, you win. Be Krasmazov. <laughs> I don't care. Why are you so hell-bent on proving that you're Krasmazov anyway? I'm a communar because I believe a powerful nation-state is the only way to protect the working class from subhumans. Okay, I don't think... That, probably not that one. Uh, because actually he wanted stability and incremental progress, so do I, because he was totally a gangster and a bank robber who went for all the cash in the world. That's me. I'm a communist. artist. All right, class. You fought in the revolution and everything, if you say so. Father Mazov, the hero of the working class. Whoever lives here definitely shares your enthusiasm. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. Sick. Nine millimeter bullet. What the hell do you have that for in your a bullet and no gun? Summer plans. Sarah Mirizian. Sarah Mirizian lounge jacket. A classic white summer jacket loved both by the Sarah Mirizian Communist Party and the accompanying subtropical drug traffickers. It fits you well regardless of your political ambitions. Wait, how do I see how many bullets I have? Got one bullet. Cool. Um, let's see. What checks do I need to complete? This is done almost. I could just get a new thing. New set of Krasmazov. There's something you can't get out of your head. Krasmazov, the father of scientific communism, the premier of the Communist Party of Shest and Grad during the anti-Centennial Revolution, head of the 11-day government, sideboard-toting, bearded figure head of the movement, shot himself in the mouth, and died? One day in his cabinet, as things were collapsing around him? Just gave up? That's not good propaganda, is it? Be a communist. Shoot yourself in the mouth. Something about this irks you. 
because he never died. Um, there's also this pan. There's so many. <laughs> I already have six. No, I gotta. I've already taken a few. I mean, I could get rid of like uh, white morning. I guess I don't really want that. Yeah, not bad. I mean, honestly, these aren't all bad. I mean, this could be bad, but I doubt it. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the Communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. Why is the star upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. Because white is the color of peace. Gone. Gone is the oh. glory of hope. Only the scribblings of impoverished students remain. In dirty hallways. Goofy. Burger box, full cigarette butts, and electric wires. It's a door, nothing for you right now. Let me get the pry bar out. Someone's growing rosemary and thyme in a cactus. Or apartment 29. These signs whoever lives here isn't one. Or isn't home. Voices from within singing along to some buoyant dance track. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? What do you mean? The smoker on the balcony. This is why we are here, right? He might know something about the murder. So tomorrow, 9 p.m.? Suddenly, he's a little worried about your memory. Sounds good. Tomorrow, 20. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I should tell the old woman about who's in the apartment. Give me a moment. I didn't find any counterculture people in apartment number 10. It was just a real estate agent setting up the room for new tenants. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. No one is coming. There will be nothing but squalor unless we start killing real estate agents. We won't be killing anyone. And you shouldn't say things like that. You're a police That's officer. That's funny. There's been enough killing. I've seen it. <laughs> She's seen it and known those who have been killed. She's old. She's been around. Probably during the uh, revolution. Revolution. Wait, I gotta get the key for manana. I also never leveled up. I don't think. No, I did not. Oh, 
Uh, I think the white ones are things that I can still do. Titus. Oh, those on white are available to try now. Let's see. Let's zoom out so far. Oh, I should also investigate this. The trash can take the smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. The container sounds a muffled gong. Gong. Right. You miss He fucked the tree up! Fucked it good! It was porno! By the way, kipped is a racial slur. Oh, uh, I wish I could have seen you to see it. Shoot that shit at Kuno, pig o' naught. Kuno, I found your shack. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? I phase shifted through the roofing material. Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. He can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? What was with the pig head? Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Um, were you trying to send a message of some sort? Eh, uh, <laughs> yeah, to the both of you. Watch your ass in Kuno's town, or Kuno's gonna fuck your head off. Found a plate covered with white, with powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. What's with the tube of Magnusolum, Kuno? It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? Magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno! He's gonna use it against <coughs> me, Kuno! I know all about magnesium. I rock it all the time. You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig! Don't do mag! You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die! Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. The fuck do you good call, okay. Pigmeister? It's not oh. Kuno. It's Kuno S. Interesting. How? Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something. Something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you, even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. She only hisses and says murder was the case that they gave her. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you f whispering about. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? 
Let Whisper pick. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Am I glad she's out of her hair? She's fucked up. She's not fucked up. Everyone's fucked up. Stop judging shit. Wrong move. But he's whispering still. You haven't lost him. Just don't mess up again. Or you will. There are no guarantees here. Uh, what's up with her? She's terrifying. Crazy scary. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you. Kuno talks to whoever he wants. Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. What do you mean she smoked someone? Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. You serious about this killing business? Killing is serious shit. Kuno's always serious about the 488. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Okay, how many cops has she killed then? Forget Kuno said that. Kuno was just shitting. Kuno was just running his mouth. Kuno's stupid like that. There's something cold in the air, like water lapping against cold stones or dripping in a hallway nearby. Three years ago, there were shoes in the corner. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. Fear. You think she has anything to do with the dead man? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Where were you? Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. You said she's insane? Yeah, she's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. Captain and shit. She does the real deal. Whoa. Yeah. What's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. What language she uses? Fuck knows. She says it's the song of air people or some shit. What people? Crazy people. The fucking knackies. I don't know. Some things are too awful to dwell on. The knackies and runkaris might be some kind of defense mechanism. She your sister? Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in. Like a mad dog or some shit. Stray? Yeah, she was just there. What was that, Kuno? She was in the hallway, dripping wet, by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. That hallway there with the janitor's closet? Yeah, that's the place. She was just balled up near the closet, psycho style. Why was she dripping wet? Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuno went out. Said she got in, how? I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home, and she's sleeping under the desk, under a pile of clothes, like a dog. What about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there, or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno? Kuno S? Two of a kind. Why is she called Kuno S then? Because she fucking looks like Kuno. You don't know her name? No one knows her name. Kuno told you this shit was psycho killer. How are you dealing with all this? How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. You need backup. I'm here for you. Listen, listen. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. Do you understand? He may not be able to do it, but he will try. Right now, he believes he will. Understood, Kuno. 
All right. Now we can do business. He's breathing heavily. That took something out of him. Business? Yeah. What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with. Oh, don't hook him up with shit, Kuno. See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style, pig cooker. See, it's tension and release with Kuno. Now we releasing. The pan buying shit, that's on now too. 90% discount for Kuno's pig. <laughs> Kuno can flex. Kuno flexes for hobos. Kuno sees you're in need. What's uh, what was that all about running you and Aaron and the old narcotics Kuno? Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's gotta throw his dirty popo man at it. Hey, okay. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Who's your dad, Kuno? Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks too. How much material are, how much material are we talking about? Like half. Half of what? A baggie, but like in this vial. That's not very much material at all. Fuck you talking about half a G. This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. <laughs> I made up my mind, Kuno, and this is what's going to happen. Okay. Kuno's listening. Um... Lie, you need speed. Uh, I'm going in there, but not for this. Be I'm going after the most violent man in Revishol. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that shit back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Just get in the apartment building. Kuno knows you already fucked your way in. Kuno knows everything. Go to room 12, first floor, and kick down the door. Police violence style. Kuno style. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckheads. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. Oh boy. What the hell are you signing us up for here? I'm going to kill Kuno. <laughs> Come on, Kim. Obviously, I'm not going to take it. We need to get drugs away from a minor. Okay, then. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Kuno doesn't fucking care. All right. So, the safe. Cool. There are several footprints in the mud. Eight pairs of boots cool. have shuffled. Did One. This earlier. Standard. Is it? Two. Stand. Three. Hobnailed. Four. Standard. Five. Another. Six. Light as air. Better late. Seven. The glowing. Eight. Another. Seven sets of. That's all? I'm guessing that's the skin. Yes, well, I could still be wrong. Two hundred. He might be right. Probably. Is there anything else that interesting? Someone of. He regrets it. I don't know. The lieutenant. Perhaps it could be a driver. We should keep our eyes. Mm hmm. A week? It is not. I pulled. Correct. Again. What do I then have to. Indeed. But we know the. That is tracks? Yes. Remote viewers division. Yeah! It is done. You've broken loose from the confines of modern science and into the vault of extrasensory knowledge from exotic cultures. Mankind has always searched for a means to break the shackles restraining the mind. Some practice meditation. Some take like a ton of DMT. You apparently only need to rub your temples and bam, the ether opens before you, presenting its dark secrets. Entities in the void making contact definitely not just because you're rubbing your temples and talking to yourself absolutely not psych passes wait what oh minus one difficulty yeah sick like it yes 
All of these are just like make you fucking dumb for like a bit. Okay, I don't want to get rid of the look. Cool. All right, let me get that key from Manana before I forget while I'm out here, and then I will talk to the Hardy Boys. I should also sell the bottles I have. So, how'd you like our harbor? Labor Utopia. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. Right. You talk to the boss eye to eye, like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Ever said you have a key to a door? A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? He said it belonged to a weasel. Oh, say no more. I got you. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. Um. This one. I knew this man was a commie. And it's a good thing you're doing, too. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rags. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. Anything else I should know about this task? The weasel person? Went home me home? I'm more of a philosophical dog worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. Who he is and what they're fighting for. This is interesting. Ask him about the Hardy Boys. Actually, do you know anything about the Hardy Boys? Los Hardis? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Ebrard's law. But really, they're just like you. Why are you striking? We're negotiating our share. Your share? Aye. Um... Wait, so not wages or pensions or... This stuff. They already cover. Shouldn't you be more... Uh, no. However much you feed the wolf. The wolf always wants more. I like wolves. How large a share would you like? All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board. So they could take part in the decision-making process. Are you a communist? No. I don't think I'm a communist. Seeing something of value and saying I want it all to myself is a much older and simpler notion. No science to it at all. Even a weak child can think it. The only things holding someone back are I can't and I shouldn't. Right on, brother. Just the way the world works, boyadero. Uh, the boss man, Everard, what can you tell me about him? I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. What does bossing the union entail anyway? I guess you kind of get to be the village chief. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties. Watches out for his own. By that, you mean corruption? By heavens, why would he not be corrupt? We live in a harsh and disordered world, see? And in this world, the old man is corrupt for our benefit, and we know it. Appreciate it, even. He is, personally, not too lavish. That does seem lavish to me. He is reasonably lavish, sure. That's his prerogative. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. That would be a manipulative illusion. True. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway. And moralism is the most corrupt of them all. You seem to have spent a lot of time thinking about the political situation. Sure. I've had the necessary free time. Fortunately, there's always time. The look in his brown eyes conjures up an understanding. For him, Having command of his time is the most important thing. It all comes together now. The way he speaks about scabs, his general attitude. He's a follower of a 500-year-old Franco-Nigerian Boyadero code. 
itself an appropriation of Vespertine cool. That of a noble peasant or a traveling herdsman. True to yourself, independent in your actions, loyal to your friends. Maybe I am a boyadero. No. Could. No. The man sits on the railing, his hands reaching far and wide. Yet it feels as if he could effortlessly go even wider, if need be, an endless torrent of time. Any idea who killed the hangman? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? Uh, the harbor is a prime area of suspicion. In your opinion, are the dock workers involved in the killing? What a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Pushed how? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. Hold up, what does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Did you kill him? I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men, with all sorts of skills. He means a more violent faction could easily take care of such a thing. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. Let me talk to the Hardy Boys really quick. Go through that dialogue that I already did earlier when I be before I fucking died. Looks like. The circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Why do you talk? Or what? Actually, this per- Shut the fuck! So, let me get this. That's right. You're not good. There's no point in pushing it further. Cool. I already did all that. Might as well go open that apartment door for Everhart. Oh, I was gonna sell the shit at the thing. The tear machine stand. Your bottles clunk. Hell yeah, one dollar and forty cents. I should also pay off card. I believe it's twenty. Please be just twenty bucks. Can I help you? Got the twenty rare. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another twenty. How could anyone forget, asshole? <laughs> Alright. Go check out that room for Everart. Fuck. What was that? Also tell Joyce, I think I talked to everybody. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Why did I do this? What is this loading screen of? That's the island. The end. This must be it. The basement door is weather worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. The royal lion, Guillaume's kitten. This knocker will last a lifetime and then some. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in. You feel eyes on you, watching you from the window overlooking the yard. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movements. In fact, 
It's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for. But every day tells you something new about yourself. Apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So you don't mind if I unlock the door? I mind that a local thug is using the RCM for his busy work. But if this gets us to the bottom of this hanging, then I'm willing to look over it. On the other hand, we could just leave and tell Evrat we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. I'd have right. That's also an option. Yes. Presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. You took this task. You make the call. The door is right here. You can just open it and be done with this. Besides, if you never open it, you're never going to find out what's behind the door. You I'm try to be it. as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. Well, buddy, you opened it. No need to go inside. It would be rude. Good job. Let's go now. I'm sure there's nothing interesting in there. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Jesus. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. As you hold the open door, you can feel the air moving. A little draft. A whistle. I'm going in. The smell of disinfectant in the room. It smells like chemicals. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. What do I mean, uncomfortable? The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. Typical asshole. This person is unhappy. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs, then puts it back down with a look of disdain. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. There's the missing teen soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the Whirling's container to dump his trash. And now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. Do you think it's the same person who put the dead man's clothes in the trash? Who knows? I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter. But still, a nice coincidence. Whoever lives here admires fair-haired fair fantasy heroes with big muscles. Enter Isolary dress shirt. Book titled The Hidden World of Walking Sticks. You can almost feel the warmth of the red sun on the flag. This is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. What's with the sun? This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. What's the sevenfold sun miracle? It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Revachol got its flag. It is but one of the many strange optic atmospheric phenomena of this wondrous archipelago. You're sure you once saw sun dogs in your youth and blue flares. Lieutenant, old flag of the suzerain. Mm-hmm. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. Don't bow to the flag. The flag doesn't seem to mind. It's just a colorful fabric with a sun sewn onto it. Like all feudal flags, it looks like a children's drawing. True, they all do kind of look like that. Magnesium, thank God. Oh, well, suitcase will close. Guests are staying over. Oh, Gary, you piece of shit. 
Cool. Alright, got some magnesium out of it. I'm happy about that. Talk to Joyce. I guess I should also tell Everard about me going to the thing. Okay, good with numbers. Pressed and spotless gleaming white shirt. The kind that serious men wear. At serious inter -easolary officers. Not yet piss-soaked or cum-stained. Oh, Jesus. Disgusting. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Spoke with the Lord, On the contrary, officer, I suggest. Okay, I don't know. By the way, I talked have. to Everard. And how did you like Mr. Clare? Finally, time to choose sides. Um. You're a champion of Smallfield. Huh. Yes, I have chosen his side in the class or my loyalty does not have a price and is non negotiable, sorry. And here I thought my modest payment of a hundred and thirty real would stick. In all good humor, that was a donation. It has been registered and it will yield you no favors. Another thing, the position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Tell her she'll like you for it. Jesus. Yeah! Your disgusting necktie agrees completely. Let's gossip. Mr. Everard's helping me find my gun. Okay. Weird. Oh no. One of the positive things to come from the revolution is the unhindered exchange of information you see, even when it comes to trade secrets, which isn't to suggest our talks constitute corporate espionage. Even if they did, it would be fine. But they don't since you logged the money as a donation, and this is clearly just gossip between friends. Mr. Everard is helping me find my gun. Oh. That's so helpful of him. The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. He's able to contain the anger and surprise. Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. Incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? <laughs> Mr. Everard is helping me find my gun. Ah, uh, yes. As you said. Please, don't get him in a loop. If he gets in a loop, it will last forever. Ask him to say something else, please. Of course. Thank you for the advice. I'm glad you were here to assist. Your other dealings with Everard are still of considerable interest to me. The lieutenant will be more lenient toward sharing those, hopefully. Of course, detective. Should so Until then, is there anything I can help? Okay, I don't know what she means about there are people I have not talked to yet, but... Okay, wait, I can pick all of these up. Okay. Um, unless you mean sh the the driver I haven't talked to is Ruby, then might be a while. I have so many bottles. I didn't even know you could pick these ones up. I thought they were just like decorations. You don't blow when you hold tab.
I never talked to you, actually. I have really held down myself. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. Rene, tsk, tsk. it's a little pleasures. Life doesn't need to be a, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance of this fine day? You mentioned Jean-Marie Bo Beaulieu. Beaulieu. Who's that? Oh, sweet Jenny. She was the finest woman in all of Revachol. Maybe the entire world. Do not defile her memory, Gaston. Let her rest in peace. We both know her. We knew her. All right. Lived on the same street our entire lives, just two houses apart. The three of us have been best friends since we were four. She was Rene's first girl back when the prick was 16. They were courting till he decided he'd rather die for some great ideal than just be happy. And then you stole her from me. Well, technically, you stole her from me because we'd been pretty close ever since you two had that falling out over the ink you spilled over a pretty yellow dress. We were just boys then. This was different. You, no point starting this all over again. For the thousandth and the first time. Especially when we have company. Officer. What happened to her? She died of pneumonia two winters ago. It was a quiet passage. Peaceful. Rene and I were both by her bedside when she... Died. No use sugarcoating it. Won't bring her back. Will it now? Departed. Hmm. Until the very hand she couldn't decide between us. The most indecisive woman I've ever met. A quick grimace of pain passes over Rene's features, but he immediately regains control. His face now a dispassionate mask again. Why do you think she was indecisive? She could never make up her mind about anything. What to have for breakfast, favorite color, or which one of us to marry. She was always leaving one of us for the other, but never long enough to actually get married. Uh, nothing wrong with winning your options first. Heck, technically, we're both still engaged to her. You always confused her. Couldn't let us be happy. So just her with your fancy words and pastries. He suddenly remembers you are still there. Falls silent and turns away. Thanks for sharing. Of course, officer. Memory sweet of course, officer. Oh. Memories are all we have left. You know about the dead man. Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. Come on, you must have heard something. No, officers, I'm sorry. And I really would like to assist. You are both good guys. I can see that. Then help them, you wimp. You have plenty of shoulder with the ghost caviar in the Union. Someone must know something. I wish I could, but I just don't know anything. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone knows and respects that. Respects? Sounds a bit like you're holding back. I'm not. I'm not even any- Of course he's holding back. His mouth is so full of union prick he can't even speak properly. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you piss on it? Is that okay, René? I'm not anyone impotent in the union. I just know Evrard. How do you know Evrard? Everyone in Martinez knows the Clare brothers. I taught this boy's human studies and history in the gymnasium. Gymnasium. I love that word. What do you know about history? You never witnessed history. Only heard about it years later, when it had already moved on. You don't know history. The old soldier mumbles something under his breath and turns to face the sea. The blind leading the blind doesn't even begin to describe it, is what he said. Let's try not to get caught in a crossfire. Lest we leave riddled with bullet holes, 
This animosity is ancient. Are you a union member? Oh, in many ways, yes. Like an honorary member. I attend meetings and parties. Help with little things. Evrard, Edgar, and the older debarders all know me. In many ways? Oh, yes. You're not an actual member. Not in the technical sense. I don't have a vote or a membership card. But Evrard keeps me on the payroll. Just for the little things. Of course he's not a member. He's not a member of anything. I knew that. He's a Vezavain. Turns to where the wind blows and tries to look important. I hate this socialist rabble. But even siding with them is better than living your entire life on the fence. Never committing to anything. Pick a damn side already. What are the little things you do for Everard? Writing work mostly. Occasionally, he needs something written, and I happen to have a way with words, people say. What kind of things do you write for him? Oh, nothing official, I assure you. Just essays for the newspapers. About Martinez, and how things are, and how they could be. Everard and I have this long talk where... Well, he tells his little penman exactly what to say. It's commie propaganda, plain and simple. You should be ashamed of yourself. Thanks, that's all for now. No, thank you. Sure. No, thank you. For being consummate professionals. You'll have this case wrapped up in no time. Rules of this game. Oh, the goal is to throw you bull. As close to the cochonnet as you can. That's the cochonnet. Interesting. Tell me more about it. Well, first, you draw a circle about a half a meter in diameter. We made ours out of rope. Then, the order of play is determined by a coin toss. You win it. You get to throw the cochonnet. Then, the players aim to throw their bulls as close to the cochonnet as possible. They must stay in the circle and keep both feet planted. Anything else you can tell me about, about Petank? I could, but I'd rather not. I don't want to take up your time with trivial details, officer. Is he denying you information when you clearly requested it? That's it. We're blowing the lid off this man, Jar. You need to know things. True? Ha ha ha. Oh god. Do I really and why? Yes, yes you do. Knowledge is power. Bathe in it. Empower yourself. No, I think I'm good. Trust me. I think I get it. Thanks, Gaston. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, officer. Good. Gaston finally understands the rules now. <laughs> Let's see if it makes him a better petonquista. I don't like where this is going, officer. Don't you think we should do something else now? No, I want to talk to him. I promise it won't be about Petank. Ah, <sighs> hurry up then. Looks delicious. Can I have a bite of that? I'm sorry, officer. The only one you- Suddenly you realize how the sandwich looks like a culinary one. In addition to the obvious slice of ham, a fat one, you notice a brim of a tomato peeking from below. And is that mayonnaise? Please, man, can I just have a bite? Believe me, officer. I wish I could help you, but I- You can barely hear him. The sweet smell of pickles in harmony with garlic butter. Let's just share it. Fuck off! It's mine! Sorry, officer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it in a bad way. But when the dissidents come to rape our country, he hides. But try to get a bite of his dear sandwich and he gets claws. We are a special kind of vermin, Gaston. Bye for now. Oh, Gaston. I mean, sandwiches are pretty good. So. Oh, you got anything to say? No. All right. Well, I think that's that's good for today. Couple hours. So I have this level up point, but I don't know what to put it in. I'm about to level up again. So whatever. I'll figure it out. Ow. I'm starving.